What was the kitchen cabinet? It was the name given to President Andrew Jackson's unofficial group of advisors. Who reportedly met with him in the White House kitchen? The group included the then Secretary of State Martin Van Buren, 1782-1862. Who went on to become Vice President, during Jackson's second term, and President from 1837-1841, to 1841, F. P. Blair. 1791-1876, editor of the Washington Post, who was active in American politics and later helped. Get Abraham Lincoln elected to office, 1860, and Amos Kendall, 1789-1869. A journalist who was also a speech writer for Jackson and went on to become U.S. Postmaster General. The Kitchen Cabinet was influential in formulating policy during Jackson's first term, 1829-33. Many believe because the president's real cabinet, which he convened infrequently, had proved ineffective. But Jackson, the seventh president of the United States, drew harsh criticism for relying on his cronies in this way. When he reorganized the cabinet in 1831, the kitchen cabinet disbanded. Jackson's favoritism to his circle of friends did not end with the kitchen cabinet, however. During his presidency the spoils system was in full force. Jackson gave public offices as rewards to many of his loyal supporters. Though the term spoils system was popularized during Jackson's terms in office, it was his friend. Senator William Marcy, who coined the phrase when he stated, to the victor belong the spoils of the enemy. Jackson was not the first president to grant political powers to his party's members. And the practice continued through the 19th century. However, beginning in 1883 laws were passed that gradually put an end to or at least limited, the spoil system. What is the Hegelian dialectic? It is the system of reasoning put forth by German philosopher George Hegel, 1771831 Who theorized that at the center of the universe there is an absolute spirit that guides all reality According to Hegel all historical developments follow three basic laws each event follows a necessary course In other words it could not have happened in any other way each historical event represents not only change but progress, and one historical event, or phase, tends to be replaced by its opposite, which is later replaced by a resolution of the two extremes. This third law of Hegel's dialectic is the pendulum theory discussed by scholars and students of history. That events swing from one extreme to the other before the pendulum comes to rest at middle. The extreme phases are called the thesis and the antithesis, the resolution is called the synthesis. Based on this system, Hegel asserted that human beings can comprehend the unfolding of history. In this way, he viewed the human experience as absolute and knowable.
When did IBM enter the personal computer business? IBM, International Business Machines, organized in 1924, had long been an industry leader in developing and producing computers for business and science, but in August 1981, the company jumped into the consumer business. Competing with upstart Apple for a share in the personal computer, PC, business. The PC introduced by IBM used a Microsoft Disk Operating System, MS-DOS, and soon captured 75% of the market. Observing the company's enormous success, other firms began producing IBM clones, which could use the same software as the IBM PC. When were the first Olympic Games? The Olympics date to about 900 B. C. When, in ancient Greece, tens of thousands of sandal-wearing spectators descended on Olympia to cheer the runners, wrestlers, and bare-skinned boxers competing there. The Games at Olympia were one of four athletic festivals in Greece, the others being the Isthmian Games at Corinth. The Nemean Games, and the Pythian Games at Delphi, all of which alternated to form the Periodos. Or circuits, which guaranteed sports fans the opportunity to attend an athletic festival every year. Winning was everything then, athletes were required to register in order to compete. And rumors of Herculean opponents sometimes prompted competitors to withdraw. Victors were awarded crowns of olive leaves, and the second and third place finishers returned home undecorated. The modern Olympic Games, begun by diminutive Frenchman Baron Pierre de Coubertin, 1862 to 1937, possess a decidedly different spirit than did their ancient counterpart, where the only rules were that participants were not allowed to gouge bite, put a knee to the groin, strangle, or throw sand at their opponent. The modern Olympic Games, publicly proposed by Coubertin on November 25, 1892, in Paris, and first held in Athens, Greece, in 1896, are based on their initiator's vision of the Olympic competition as an occasion to promote peace, harmony, and internationalism. In April 1896 some 40,000 spectators pressed into the Panathenaean Stadium, which had been constructed on the site of an ancient stadium in Athens, to witness the athletic feats of the first modern Olympic heroes. Thirteen nations participated, only male athletes, just more than 300 of them competed, and Greece received the most medals, 47. The second Olympic Games were held in 1900 in Paris. Supreme Court decided Article 3 of the U.S. Constitution, 1788, states that the judicial power of the United States shall be vested in one Supreme Court.
it goes on to describe the High Court's jurisdiction. But it does not specify how the court was to be formed or how many justices it would consist of. These matters were left to Congress, which in 1788, the year the Constitution was ratified, passed the first Judiciary Act, formulating the court's original organization. It had just six members, the Chief Justice, plus five associates. Subsequent congressional acts have modified the Supreme Court's organization and jurisdiction. Since 1869 the court has consisted of nine members. The Chief Justice and eight associates who, once named, serve for life. Justices are appointed by the President but must be approved by the Senate. According to Article 2 of the Constitution. To avoid partisanship, Congress is prevented from lowering the salaries of any of the justices. And justices can only be removed from the bench by impeachment. A formal document that charges a public official with misconduct. Cases reach the High Court through appeal lower court decisions that are formally challenged. And the justices make their rulings based on a majority vote. Who was the first Chief Justice of the U.S.? What were the seven cities of Cibola? The reference is to an area in present-day northern New Mexico that was thought by early Spanish explorers to contain vast treasures. One expedition in search of these legendary golden cities was that led by Francisco Vasquez de Coronado, c. 1510-1554, who sought to claim the riches for Spain. In 1540 he set out from North Galicia, a province northwest of Mexico City. With some 300 Spanish troops as well as some Indians. They made it into the region where Arizona and New Mexico lie today. There they encountered Zuni Indian settlements and believed these to be Cibola. The Spaniards captured the Zuni who were the descendants of the Anasazi cliff dwellers that had settled the southwest as early as 10,000 BC. The Spaniards found no gold at the Zuni settlement. Separate expeditions set out, still hoping to locate riches in the area. They did not find any precious metals, but they did make some discoveries. They were the first Europeans to see the Grand Canyon, to travel up the Rio Grande Valley. And to encounter several native peoples living in the region. In 1546 Coronado was accused of cruelty in his treatment of these peoples. Where does the word Pope come from? The word Pope is derived from the Greek word Papas, meaning Papa, Father. The Pope is also referred to as the Holy Father, the Vicar of Christ, and Pontiff. Finally, how can Rwanda rebuild?
the governing Tutsis have been able to enforce a calm on the tiny landlocked nation. But some believe it is an uneasy calm and wonder how long minority. Tutsis can retain control over a country that is 85% Hutu. In Rwanda's efforts to serve justice, its jails and courts remained jammed 10 years after the genocide. And since so many had fled the country and others escaped prosecution, justice could not be served fully. Some legal experts thought that a general amnesty issued by the Rwandan government, would help put the nation's problems behind them. How was the Soviet Union formed? The Soviet Union was officially created in 1922 when Russia joined with Ukraine, Belorussia, and the Transcaucasian Federation, Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Georgia, to form the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, U. SSR. These republics were later joined by nine others, and territories were redrawn so that by 1940, the Union consisted of 15 Soviet Socialist Republics, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Belarusia, now Belarus, Estonia, Georgia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyz, now Kyrgyzstan, Latvia, Lithuania, Moldavia, now Moldova, Russia, Tadzhikistan, also spelled Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Ukraine, and Uzbekistan. What was the Berlin Airlift? It was the response during 1948 and 1949 to the Soviet blockade of West Berlin. After World War II, 1939-45, the German city had been divided into four occupation zones. American, British, French, and Soviet. But following the conclusion of the war, it did not take long for the Cold War. 1947-89, between the Western powers and the Soviet Union to heat up. When the Americans, British, and French agreed to combine their three areas of Berlin into one economic entity. The Soviets responded by cutting the area off from all supply routes. In June 1948 all arteries road, rail, and water into West Berlin were blocked by Soviet troops. Since Berlin was completely surrounded by the Soviet occupation zone, the Soviets clearly believed the blockade would be an effective move that would prompt the Western countries to pull out. But the move failed, the Americans, British, and French set up a massive airlift. For the next 11 months, West Berlin was supplied with food and fuel entirely by airplanes. The Soviets lifted the blockade in May 1949, and the airlift ended by September. How old is country music? Old time music or hillbilly music, both early names for country music. Emerged in the early decades of the 1900s. By 1920 the first country music radio stations had opened. 
and healthy record sales in rural areas caused music industry executives to take notice. But it was an event in 1925, in the middle of the American Jazz Age. That put country music on the map, on November 28, WSM Radio broadcast the WSM Barn Dance. Which soon became known as the Grand Ole Opry when the Master of Ceremonies, George D. Hay, took to introducing the program that way since it was aired immediately after an opera program. The show's first performer was Uncle Jimmy Thompson, 1848 to 1931. Early favorites included Uncle Dave Macon, 1870 to 1952, who played the banjo and sang. And Roy Acuff, 1903 to 1992, who was the Opry's first singing star. Millions tuned in and soon the Nashville-based show had turned Tennessee's capital city into music. City USA In the 1960s and again in the late 1980s and 1990s, country music reached the height of popularity. While holding on to its small town, rural-based audience who were the show's first fans. How was Cortez able to claim Mexico for the Spaniards? On behalf of the European power, Hernan Cortez, 1485-1547, claimed Mexico after conquering its native peoples. In 1519 Cortés landed on the eastern coast of Mexico and founded the city of Veracruz. From there he marched inland, making an alliance with the Tlaxcalan Indians, who had fought wars against the powerful Aztecs in central Mexico. On November 8 of that year, Cortés marched into Mexico City then named Tenochtitlan, and took the Aztec leader, Montezuma, hostage. Cortés then continued to Mexico's west coast. When he returned to Mexico City in the central part of the country in 1520, he found the Aztecs in revolt against the Spaniards. Fierce fighting ensued, and by the end of June Montezuma was dead. This period of warfare is still remembered today by Mexicans as La Noche Triste, the Sorrowful Night. It was not until the following year, in August 1521, that Cortés, after a four-month battle, claimed Mexico City, and the land came under control of the Spanish. What was the impact of the fire at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas? The November 21, 1980, blaze, which killed 85 people and injured more than 600, led to a nationwide revision of local fire codes giving the tragic event large-scale political significance. The MGM Grand Hotel had, in fact, passed fire inspections, but the building, which was then the world's largest gambling casino, had been eight years in the making. Between the time it was designed, fire protection systems included, and the time it was built, the building no longer complied with the always improving safety standard for high-rise buildings. A short circuit started the blaze, 
which sent thick black smoke through the air ducts and escape stairwells. In the 21 floors of guest rooms, since more people were harmed or killed by smoke inhalation than by the fire itself. The American public became aware of the danger of smoke over and above that of fire. The event was a catalyst for change, prior to the November blaze. Most communities had not required existing buildings to be retrofitted every time fire safety codes changed and improved. After the fire, many communities chose to require building owners to comply with current protection capabilities. Who is Che Guevara? Echo Beto Che Guevara, 1928-1967 was an idealist who became involved in revolutionary movements in at least three countries. The Argentinian, who had earned his degree in medicine in Buenos Aires in 1953, believed that social change and the elimination of poverty could only come about through armed conflict. Guevara met Fidel Castro, 1926, in Mexico in 1954 and served his guerrilla forces as a physician and military commander during the Cuban Revolution, 1956-59. Once in power, Castro appointed Guevara as president of the National Bank of Cuba. Between 1965 and 1967 Guevara became active in leftist movements in Congo and in Latin America. He was leading a force against Bolivian government when he was killed in 1967. What have been the deadliest tropical storms in the world? The deadliest tropical storms are not hurricanes but rather the unnamed super cyclones that sweep out of the Bay of Bengal. In the Indian Ocean, striking the densely populated Indian subcontinent. These storms have been known to kill 100,000 people or more. The fatalities numbered more than 300,000 when a 1970 cyclone struck East Pakistan, Bangladesh. That storm is still the deadliest cyclone to hit the region. But more recent Indian cyclones, which usually occur in April through June and September through November, have sometimes reached super cyclone status. An April 1991 storm packing 160 mile per hour winds and 20 foot waves swept over Bangladesh's low lying coastal plain. There was no place for residents to seek shelter from the advancing sea. An estimated 140,000 people perished and 10 million were left homeless. Property damage climbed to more than $2 billion. In October 1999 another devastating cyclone struck the Bay of Bengal region. It was the strongest and deadliest since the 1991 disaster, 10,000 died and more than a million people lost their homes. Was despotic Romanian leader Nicolae Ceausescu brought to justice?
in the 1989 trial of Nikolai Ceausescu, 1918-1989, and his wife Elena, 1919-1989, justice may not have been served. But many believe the tyrannical communist leader of Romania had indeed met with just deserts. The December 25th trial of the Ceausescu's lasted all of 60 minutes. 55 minutes of questioning, to which the president's response was. I do not recognize you, I do not recognize this court, followed by five minutes of deliberation. The court and judge were made up of the leaders in the popular rebellion that had begun December. 16 when a pro-democracy rally attended by some 350,000 people ended in the Romanian armies and Ceausescu's. Secret police attacking unarmed demonstrators, killing several hundred men, women and children. In demonstrations that followed, the Romanian army. Long resentful of the privileged status enjoyed by the president's secret police, turned on Ceausescu's government. Handing over automatic weapons to insurgents, whom they now joined in a popular uprising. On December 21 state television and radio came under the people's control. As did the Communist Party's central building and the Royal Palace which were later found to be replete with luxuries and were also connected by a maze of tunnels. The Ceausescu's and a few of their close associates tried to flee, but were captured on December 22 the same day that mass graves were found, revealing the secret police's torture and destruction of several hundred men, women and children. The rebels drove the Ceausescu's around for three days, averting the still loyal secret police. Realizing that time was not on their side. The captors assembled an extraordinary military tribunal in a small schoolroom at an army barracks. A defense lawyer was provided for Ceausescu, counsel urged the former president to plead guilty by reason of insanity. He refused. The charges against Ceausescu included genocide. The massacre of demonstrators, and subversion of the economy for his own benefit. One hour later, the guilty verdict was delivered. Asked if they wished to appeal the decision, the Ceausescu's remained silent. They were promptly taken outside, where a squad opened fire on the former president and his wife. Videotape of the brutal killings The squad had fired as many as 30 rounds, was shown on Romanian television. By December 30 the country was controlled by rebel forces. When did modern architecture begin? The term modern architecture is used to refer to the architecture that turned away from past historical designs in favor of designs that are expressive of their own time. As such, it had its beginnings in the late 19th century when architects began reacting to the eclecticism that was prevalent at the time. Two schools emerged, Art Nouveau and the Chicago School. Art Nouveau, which had begun about 1890, held sway in Europe for some 20 years and was evident not only in architecture and interiors, but in furniture. 
jewelry, typography, sculpture, painting, and other fine and applied arts. Its proponents included Belgian architects Victor Horta. 1861-1947, and Henry van de Velde, 1863-1957, and Spaniard Antonio Gaudi, 1852-1926. But it was the Chicago school that, in the rebuilding days after the Great Chicago Fire, 1871, created an entirely new form. American engineer and architect William L. E. Baron Jenny, 1832-1907, led the way. Four of the five younger architects who followed him had at one time worked in Jenny's office. Louis Henry Sullivan, 1856-1924, Martin Roche, 1855-1927. William Holabird, 1854-1923, and Daniel Hudson Burnham, 1846-1912. Burnham was joined by another architect, John Wellborn Root, 1850-1891. Together these men established solid principles for the design of modern buildings and skyscrapers where form followed function. Ornament was used sparingly, and the architects fully utilized iron, steel, and glass. By the 1920s modern architecture had taken firm hold, and in the mid-20th century it was furthered by the works of Walter Adolf Gropius, 1883-1969, L.E. Corbusier, Charles Edouard Ginaret. 1887-1965, Ludwig Mies van der Roy, 1886-1969, and Frank Lloyd Wright, 1867-1959. For practical purposes. Modern architecture ended in the 1960s with the deaths of the aforementioned masters. Examples of modern architecture include Chicago's Monadnock Building, 1891, Reliance Building, 1895, Carson Perry Scott Store, 1904, and Roby House, 1909, New York City's Rockefeller Center, 1940, Lever House, 1952, and C. Graham Building, 1958, as well as Taliesin West, 1938-59, in Arizona. Johnson Wax Company's Research Tower, 1949, in Wisconsin, and the Lovell House, 1929, in Los Angeles. What was the importance of Hitler's Beer Hall Putsch trial? The 1924 trial of German Chancellor and Führer Adolf Hitler, 1889-1945, and nine other men. Charged with treason for their attempted coup, in German, Putsch. Of late 1923, marked the beginning of Hitler's seemingly unstoppable rise to power. As the leader of the Nazi Party, National Socialist German Workers' Party, Hitler had gained enough of a following to believe that on the night of November 8, 1923, as Bavarian leader Gustav von Kahr spoke in a Munich beer hall, Hitler and his followers all of them determined to recreate a powerful German Empire and rid it of its mongrel-like quality could topple the weak German government. Merely by demonstrating that the Nazis, and not the official government, 
had gained the support of the people. But in a march through Munich the following day, the still loyal Germany regular army and the Bavarian state police opened fire on the Nazi demonstrators and their sympathizers. Killing 16 and arresting Hitler and his nine co conspirators. Their trial began on February 26, 1924, over the course of 25 days. Aided by radio and newspaper coverage, Hitler held forth, in one case taking four hours to respond to a single question. Earning him the overwhelming support of the German people. His impassioned appeals turned what ought to have been open and closed. Case of treason against him into an indictment of the German government. His basic argument was this, I cannot declare myself guilty. True, I confess to the deed, but I do not confess to the crime of high treason. There can be no question in an action which aims to undo the betrayal of this country. In 1918, Hitler was referring to the German surrender in World War I, 1914-18. Nevertheless, he and nine others were convicted of treason. Hitler was sentenced to five years in prison. Where he wrote the first volume of his infamous work Mein Kampf, My Struggle. Which revealed his frightening theories of racial supremacy and his belief in the Third Reich. Released after only nine months. Hitler walked out of prison more popular than he had been before his highly publicized trial. Who were the Romanovs? The Romanov family ruled Russia from 1613 until 1917, when Nicholas II 1868-1918, was overthrown by the Russian Revolution, 1905-17. The dynasty was established by Michael Romanov, grandnephew to Ivan the Terrible. Who ruled from 1533-1584. There were 18 Romanov rulers, including the much-studied Peter the Great, who ruled from 1682 to 1725, and Catherine the Great, who ruled from 1762 to 1796, as the last Tsar of Russia. Nicholas II, who ruled from 1894 to 1917, likely suffered not only the recrimination that was due him, but the public hostility that had accumulated over centuries of ruthless Romanov leadership. Nicholas's difficulties came to a head when he got Russia involved in World War I, 1914-18, which produced serious hardships for the Russian people and for which there was little public support. Once Tsar Nicholas was overthrown, and later killed, in the Russian Revolution. 1905-17, Bolshevik leader Vladimir Lenin, 1870-1924, set about extracting Russia from the conflict by agreeing to sever concessions to Germany. Oddly enough, the Romanov family had, in the 14th century, originated with a German nobleman, Andrew Kabyla, who had emigrated to Russia. What was the Embargo Act?
On December 22, 1807, President Thomas Jefferson, 1743 to 1826, signed the Embargo Act. Prohibiting ships that were destined for foreign ports from leaving the United States. The legislation had been drawn up in an effort to pressure France and Britain, which were then at war and had been seizing U.S. merchant ships to prevent each other from receiving American goods. The situation began after the French Navy was crushed by the British under Admiral Horatio Nelson. 1758-1805, at the Battle of Trafalgar, October 1805. French ruler Napoleon Bonaparte, 1769-1821, turned to economic warfare in his long struggle with the British. Directing all countries under French control not to trade with Britain. Its economy dependent on trade, Britain struck back by imposing a naval blockade on France. Which soon interfered with US shipping. Ever since the struggle between the two European powers had begun in 1793, the United States had tried to remain neutral. But the interruption of shipping to and from the continent and the search and seizure of ships posed significant problems to the American export business. The Embargo Act was an attempt to solve these problems without getting involved in the conflict. But the effort failed. The embargo made sales of U.S. farm surpluses impossible. New England shippers protested the act and were joined by southern cotton and tobacco planters in their opposition. Nevertheless, the embargo remained in effect for 14 months during which the American economy suffered and many ships resorted to smuggling. In 1809 Congress passed the Non-Intercourse Act, which limited the shipping embargo to France and Britain. All other foreign ports were again open to U.S. ships. Three years later, the United States was drawn into the conflict, fighting the British in the War of 1812, 1812-14. What was the controversy with Thomas Beckett? Archbishop of Canterbury Thomas Beckett, c. 1118 to 1170, was killed by knights in the service of England's King Henry II. 1133 to 1189, he had refused to be subservient to the monarch. In the long struggle between church and state, the story of St. Thomas Beckett is a dramatic chapter. Born in London in about 1118, when he was in his twenties Beckett entered into service for the Archbishop of Canterbury, the spiritual head of the Church of England. He subsequently held various church offices, including Archdeacon. When Henry II was coronate in 1154, becoming the worldly leader of the Church of England. He found in Becket one of his most vigorous champions. In 1162 Henry made him Archbishop of Canterbury. But a transformation soon occurred in Thomas Becket who put his spiritual duties first and began defending the church against the king's power. Henry, eager to increase royal authority, was determined to regain control over the church. 
a bitter struggle ensued between the two former friends. At one point, Beckett fled the country because he was in fear for his life. When he returned to England six years later, in 1170, he renewed his opposition to the king, but nevertheless forced a reconciliation with him. Henry was still irked by Beckett's open defiance to his authority. And he suggested to his knights that one among them might be brave enough to do away with him, ending the king's troubles. Four knights took the king at his word, and on December 29, 1170, they found Beckett in Canterbury Cathedral and killed him as he made his evening prayers. Henry later did penance for the crime, Beckett was canonized three years later. What was the Ptolemaic system? It was a scheme devised by the ancient Greek astronomer Ptolemy, c. 170 c. 100 BC. He proposed a system that placed Earth directly at the center of the universe with the Sun, the Moon, and the planets all orbiting around Earth. However, Ptolemy observed that the movement of the planets did not match his scheme and so he added small orbits. Called Epikicles, to the model to try to make it work. Even though it was erroneous and complicated, the Ptolemaic system was functional enough to make predictions of planetary positions. The system took hold, influencing thinking for 1,400 years. The Roman Catholic Church adopted the system as part of its doctrine, which the Church hierarchy held to even when Polish astronomer Nicholas Copernicus, Mikolaj Kopernik, 1473-1543, refuted it in 1543, arguing that the Sun, not Earth, is the center of the universe. In the 1570s accurate measurements of planet positions that had been taken by Danish astronomer Tycho Ubra. 1546-1601, proved that the Ptolemaic system was inaccurate. But it was not until 1609, when German astronomer Johannes Kepler. 1571-1630, devised a better explanation of planetary orbits, that the Ptolemaic system was put to rest. How did Montessori schools get started? The schools, evident throughout the United States, as well as Great Britain, Italy, the Netherlands, Spain, Switzerland, Sweden, Austria, France, Australia, New Zealand, Mexico, Argentina, Japan, China, Korea, Syria, India, and Pakistan, carry the name of their founder, Maria Montessori, 1870-1952 She was the first woman in Italy to earn a medical degree and to practice medicine. In 1900 Montessori pioneered teaching methods to develop sensory, motor, and intellectual skills in retarded kindergarten and primary school students. Under her direction, these unteachable pupils not only mastered basic skills, including reading and writing, but they passed the same examinations given to all primary school students in Italy. 
Montessori then spent time in the country's primary schools, where she observed the educators' practice of teaching by rote, by using repetition and memory, and their reliance on restraint, silence, and a system of reward and punishment in the classroom. She believed her system, called scientific pedagogy, which was based on non-coercive methods and self-correcting materials, such as blocks, graduated cylinders, scaled bells, and color spectrums, would yield better results in students. Montessori theorized that children possess a natural desire to learn and if put in a prepared environment, their spontaneous activity would prove educational. Instead of lecturing to their students, Montessori encouraged educators to simply demonstrate the correct use of materials to students who would then teach themselves and each other. She also believed in community involvement in schools. Encouraging parents and other community members to take active roles in the education of the children. When Montessori put these principles into action, it was to highly favorable results. In 1909 Montessori published the Montessori Method, which was made available in English three years later and became an instant bestseller in the United States. Her method, which she believed would develop and set free a child's personality in a marvelous and surprising way, caught on. For Montessori, who has been called a triumph of self-discipline, persistence, and courage, spreading the message about her teaching method became her life's work. She was still traveling, speaking to enthusiastic crowds the world over. When she died in the Netherlands at the age of 81, Montessori's beliefs which were both scientific and spiritual had a profound effect not only on students in Montessori schools, but on primary education in general. How did the Civil War begin and end? Unhappy with the outcome of the 1860 presidential election, in which Abraham Lincoln, 1809-1865, was elected, and fearing a loss of their agrarian way of life, the southern states began to make good on their promise to secede if Lincoln won the presidency, South Carolina was the first, in December of that year. In January 1861 five more states followed, Mississippi, Florida, Alabama, Georgia, and Louisiana. When representatives from the six states met the next month in Montgomery, Alabama, they established the Confederate States of America and elected Jefferson Davis, 1808-1889, President. Two days before Lincoln's inauguration, Texas joined the Confederacy. Virginia, Arkansas, North Carolina, and Tennessee joined in April. Shortly after the Civil War had already begun. The Civil War, also called the War of Secession and the War Between the States, began on April 12, 1861, when Southern troops fired on Fort Sumter, a U.S. military post in Charleston, South Carolina. Brutal fighting continued for four years. On April 9, 1865, 
General Robert E. Lee, 1807 to 1870, surrendered his ragged Confederate troops to General Ulysses S. Grant, 1822 to 1885, of the Union at Old Appomattox Courthouse, Virginia. The war had not only been between the states. It had also been between brothers, the conflict divided the nation. The Civil War took more American lives than any other war in history. What was the Hundred Years' War? The term refers to a succession of wars between England and France. The fighting began in 1337 and did not end until 1453. However, the period was not one of constant warfare. Truces and treaties brought about breaks in the military action between the countries. The reasons for the conflicts were many, England was trying to hang on to its provinces on the European continent. The French threw their support behind the Scots, who had their own battles with the English. The French wished to control the commercial centre of Flanders, present-day Belgium. Where the English had set up a profitable wool trade, and finally, the two countries disagreed about who should control the English Channel, the body of water that lies between them. To further complicate matters, marriages between the English and French aristocracy meant that heirs to either throne could find themselves with a foreign relative, allowing them to lay claim to authority over the other country as well. When the first war broke out in 1337, King Edward III, 1312-1377, of England claimed the French throne on the basis of the fact that his mother, Isabella, was the daughter of France's King Philip IV. Called Philip the Fair, 1268-1314, and the sister of three French kings. Over the course of the next century, even though England won most of the battles and for a brief time controlled France. 1420-22, it was the French who ultimately won the war in 1453. England lost all its territory on the continent. Except Calais, which was also later taken by the French, in 1558. How old is baseball? Baseball, America's pastime, is more than 200 years old. According to legend, the sports originator was U.S. Army officer Abner Doubleday. 1819-1893 who was credited with inventing and naming the game in 1839, while he was attending school in Cooperstown. New York, the site of the Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum. But in 2004 a document was uncovered in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Citing a 1791 bylaw prohibiting the playing of baseball too close to within 80 yards of, the town's meeting hall. Historians verified the authenticity of the document and its date. This is believed to be the earliest written record of the game and it establishes that the stick and ball sport was being played 42 years before Doubleday's involvement. 
baseball historians have long acknowledged that the sport, which is similar to the English games of cricket and rounders, had not one father, but thousands. Although the 2004 discovery indicates that the game was already in existence. In 1791, and popular enough to be the subject of a town ordinance. It was in the 1800s that baseball developed into the game Americans still love today. The first baseball club, the Knickerbocker Baseball Club, was organized by American sportsman Alexander Cartwright, 1820-1892, in 1842 in New York City. By 1845 the team had developed a set of 20 rules, which included specifications for where the bases are positioned and how runners can be tagged as out. The rules also defined a field of play, outside of which balls are foul. The so-called New York game spread in popularity after a famous 1846 match in Hoboken, New Jersey. By 1860 there were at least 50 organized ball clubs in the country. Union soldiers helped spread the game during the American Civil War, 1861-65. And the popularity of the sport greatly increased during the last three and a half decades of the 19th century. The first professional baseball team was the Cincinnati Red Stockings, which began play 1869. In 1876 the National League, NL, was founded, it included teams in Boston, Chicago, Cincinnati, Ohio, Hartford, Connecticut, Louisville, Kentucky, New York, Philadelphia, and St. Lewis, Missouri. By the 1880s the sport had evolved into big business. An 1887 championship series between Street Lewis and Detroit drew 51,000 paying spectators. The American League, AL, was formed in 1901, and two years later the two leagues staged a championship between their teams. In 1903, the Boston Red Sox beat the Pittsburgh Pirates in the first World Series. An overall increase in American leisure time. Created by the innovation of labor-saving household devices as well as a reduction in the average laborers. Work week helped baseball become the national sport and its favorite pastime. Played on an open field, the game hark end back to the nation's agrarian roots. But with its standardized rules and reliance on statistics, it looked forward to a modern, industrialized future. How did the word Machiavellian get its meaning? Machiavellian is defined as characterized by cunning, duplicity, or bad faith. It's based on the theory of Italian diplomat Niccolo Machiavelli, 1469-1527, who developed a code of political conduct that operates independent of ethics, thus disregarding moral authorities such as classical philosophy and Christian theology. In 1513, after having been exiled from Florence, Italy, by the powerful Medici family, Machiavelli abruptly turned his attention to writing The Prince, which puts forth a calm and uncompromising 
analysis of techniques and methods that the successful ruler must use in order to gain and keep power. Written in the form of advice to the ruler. Machiavelli advises the prince that only one consideration should govern his decisions. The effectiveness of a particular course of action, regardless of its ethical character. The book had little immediate impact in Italy, although it soon became legendary throughout Europe. And its major ideas the power of politics are familiar today even to people who have never read the book. What was Black Hawk Down? Though the U.S. military uses the term to communicate any crash of one of its Black Hawk helicopters. The phrase is closely associated with events in Mogadishu, Somalia, on October 3rd. 1993. The term became synonymous with that day after American journalist Mark Bowden wrote a book, by the same title, describing a disastrous U.S. raid on a Mogadishu warlord. The book was turned into a movie in 2001. The background is this. Somalia threw off its colonial constraints in 1960 to become an independent nation. But warring factions within the impoverished East African nation made a stable central government elusive. After staging a 1969 coup, Soviet-influenced army commander Mohamed Syed Bar. 1919 or 1921 to 1995 established a military dictatorship in Somalia. His authoritarian rule, which was marked by human rights abuses, lasted until 1991 when he was deposed in a popular uprising, he died in exile four years later. The nation of about 8 million people was in chaos, and many were starving. International donations of food were hijacked and used by competing warlords to secure weapons from other nations, thus furthering civil strife. After a 1992 ceasefire, the United Nations sent peacekeepers to Somalia and launched a humanitarian relief operation. Outgoing U.S. President George H.W. Bush 1924 supported the UN effort by approving a deployment of 25.000 American troops to Somalia to help secure trade routes over which badly needed food supplies could move. In 1993 the United States, then led by President Bill Clinton, 1946 reduced the number of troops to less than half the original deployment. Trouble was ignited on June 5, 1993, when 24 Pakistani soldiers in Somalia as part of the UN operation, were killed in an ambush. The warlord thought to be responsible for the massacre was Mohammed Farahadid. Somalia's government ordered Aided's arrest. His capture was an imperative to peace. He and his followers were staging a violent rebellion against the provisional Somali government. Led by Aided rival Ali Mahdi. Over the next several months, UN and US forces launched several attacks on what were believed to be Aided clan strongholds, but Aided himself remained an elusive target. On October 3rd U.S. Elite forces launched an assault on a Mogadishu hotel believed to be an Aided hideout. They were met 
with an ambush. Over the following 17 hours, U.S. troops, including a military mission to rescue downed Black Hawk helicopter crews, engaged in a battle with armed Somalis in the streets of Mogadishu. 18 American servicemen were killed, the bodies of some were dragged through the streets of the city. Another 84 American soldiers were wounded. Hundreds of Somalis were killed in the fighting. Video footage of the chaos was shown on international television. The Battle of Mogadishu, as it is officially called, was the most intense combat firefight experienced by U.S. troops since Vietnam. On October 7, President Clinton signed orders to withdraw all American troops from Somalia. The United States pulled out in 1994, and the UN peacekeepers followed in 1995. Even after a 2002 reconciliation conference, Somalis had not secured a central government by 2004. The country remained impoverished, strife-ridden, and lawless. The UN and other non-governmental organizations, NGOs, worked to provide much-needed humanitarian relief to Somalis. Some military and foreign affairs experts point to the Battle of Mogadishu as a primary. Reason for American reluctance to engage troops in the world's hotspots in the 1990s. When did modern surgery begin? Modern surgical techniques were developed during the late Renaissance, largely owing to the work of one man. French surgeon Ambroise Pierre, 1510-1590, called the father of modern surgery. Prior to Pierre's life work, physicians had regarded surgery as something lowly. They left this dirty work to barber surgeons. As a young man living in the French countryside, Pierre became apprenticed to one such barber surgeon. When he was only 19 years old, Pierre entered Paris's Hotel du Hospital to study surgery. Becoming a master surgeon by 1536, he later served as an army surgeon and then as physician. To four 16th century French kings Henry II, Francis II, Charles IX, and Henry III. Pierre also built a flourishing surgical practice and authored works on anatomy. Surgery, the plague, obstetrics, and the treatment of wounds. Opposing the common practice of cauterizing, burning, wounds with boiling oil to prevent infection. He introduced the method of applying a mild ointment and allowing the wound to heal naturally. Pierre was renowned for his patient care, which he based on his personal credo, I dressed him, God cured him. What are the milestones in the motion picture industry? Motion pictures continue to develop as new. Sophisticated technologies are introduced to improve the moviegoing experience for audiences. In the decades following their rudimentary beginnings, there were many early milestones. Including not only advancements in technology but improvements. 
in conditions for those working in the then fledgling industry, 1903, Edwin S. Porter's The Great Train Robbery was the first motion picture to tell a complete story. Produced by Edison Studios, the 12-minute epic established a pattern of suspense drama that was followed by subsequent movie makers. 1907 Bell & Howell Co. was founded by Chicago movie projectionist Donald H. Bell and camera repairman Albert S. Howell with $5.000 in capital. The firm went on to improve motion picture photography and projection equipment. 1910, Brooklyn Eagle newspaper cartoonist John Randolph Bray pioneered animated motion picture cartoons. Using a cell system he invented and which was subsequently used by all animators. 1912, Queen Elizabeth, starring Sarah Bernhardt, was shown July 12th at New York's Lyceum. Theater and was the first feature-length motion picture seen in America. 1915, D.W. Griffiths. The Birth of a Nation provided the blueprint for narrative films. 1925 The new editing technique used in Potemkin revolutionized the making of motion pictures around the world. Soviet film director Sergei Eisenstein created his masterpiece by splicing film shot at many locations. An approach subsequently adopted by most film directors. 1926, the first motion picture with sound, talkie, was demonstrated. 1927, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences was founded by Louis B. Meyer of MGM Studios. The first president of the Academy was Douglas Fairbanks. 1927, the first full-length talking picture, The Jazz Singer, starring vaudevillian Al Jolson, was released. By 1932 all movies talked. 1929, the first Academy Awards. Four 1928 films, were held, winners were William Wellman for Wings. Emil Janings for Best Actor, in Last Command, and Janet Gaynor for Best Actress, in Sunrise. Movie columnist Sidney Skalski dubbed the awards the Oscars. 1928, Hollywood's major film studios signed an agreement with the American Telephone and Telegraph Corporation. AT&T, to use their technology to produce films with sound leading to an explosion in the popularity of motion pictures. 1929, Eastman Kodak introduced 16mm film for motion picture cameras. 1933, the Screen Actors Guild, SAG, was formed when six actors met in Hollywood to establish a self-governing organization of actors. The first organizing meeting yielded 18 founding members. 1935, the first full-length Technicolor movie was released, Becky Sharp. The technology, however, was still in development, and the colors appeared garish. 1939, Gone with the Wind was released in Technicolor, which had come a long way since its 1935 debut. 1940. What happened in the Columbia Space Shuttle disaster? The U. 
USS Space Shuttle Columbia was lost upon its re-entry into Earth's atmosphere on the morning of February 1, 2003. All seven crew members died. The Columbia was in the skies over Texas about 15 minutes before its scheduled landing at Florida's Kennedy Space Center when, shortly before 9 a.m., EST. Ground controllers lost data from temperature controllers on the spacecraft. Over the next several minutes, National Aeronautics and Space Administration. NASA, ground control lost all flight data. At about the same time. Witnesses in Texas reported the sound of rolling thunder and debris falling from the sky. Heat detecting weather radar showed a bright red streak moving across the Texas sky. The shuttle was 40 miles above Earth and traveling at 18 times the speed of sound when it disintegrated. Leaving a trail of debris from eastern Texas to western Louisiana. The investigation later revealed that damage to the spacecraft had gone unseen during the mission. Causing the Columbia to break apart upon re-entry. The shuttle was commanded by Rick Husband and piloted by William McCool. The mission specialists were Michael Anderson, Kulpana Chabla, David Brown, and Laurel Clark. The payload specialist was Israeli astronaut Elon Ramon. In President George W. Bush's remarks to the nation that day. He said, these men and women assumed great risk in the service to all humanity. In an age when space flight has come to seem almost routine. It is easy to overlook the dangers of travel by rocket. These astronauts knew the dangers, and faced them willingly. The Columbia tragedy occurred within a week of the anniversaries of two other deadly NASA disasters. The Challenger explosion on January 28, 1986, and the launch pad fire that killed three Apollo. Astronauts on January 27, 1967. After investigating the cause of the Columbia disaster, NASA focused on implementing a new system of sensors to detect potentially fatal damage to spacecrafts while in orbit. NASA relaunched its Space Shuttle program in late July 2005 with the discovery.